friends uh, welcome to this lecture and in this lecture uh, we will discuss the uh, existence and uniqueness theorems for dynamical system. So, uh, if you uh, let us start with this, so consider the differential equation d y by d t equal to f uh, t y with the initial condition y t naught equal to y naught. Here uh, the function f is a given function of t and y, here t is a independent variable and y is a dependent variable on t and uh, this is a, a typical example of a dynamical system. So, our aim is to find out a solution of the given differential equation that is to construct a suitable function y which satisfy the differential equation d y by d t equal to f t y in a neighborhood of uh, the point t naught and the graph of f contained the point t naught comma y naught. So, I, our idea is uh, that how we can solve this uh, initial value problem since the condition given at initial point. So, we call this as initial value problem. So, our I, uh, uh, problem is how to solve this initial value problem and uh, um, from the basic course of um, ordinary differential equation or differential equation we know that under some um, um, special cases of uh, this f t y for example, if f t y is a kind of a separable form in terms of t and y and um, um, or it is just a constant function uh, it, it is just a function in terms of t or uh, some other suitable form like uh, if it is this equation number 1 can be reducible to uh, say linear uh, equation or say it is reducible to some kind of exact form then we know how to uh, solve this equation number 1. But the problem comes when this uh, f t y is not given in these uh, stated form for example, if uh, f t y is uh, some function g t and only then this can be integrated directly and we can find out the solution and if f t y is given as some g t into h y then we can solve this by using separation variable method and if uh, f of t y is given as um, like uh, um, um, is some a t uh, y plus b t then it is this d y by d t equal to a t y plus b t is nothing but a linear equation and we can solve methods are already given. And one more thing that if uh, f t y is given in, in a way such that this uh, d y by d t equal to f t y can be written as uh, say m t y um, say y dash plus um, n t y equal to 0 and we can choose m and n in a way such that this can be written as exact differential of this can be written as d by uh, d by d t of uh, say some g of t y t then we call this equation uh, as exact differential equation and we know how to solve in these uh, uh, simple cases. But the problem comes when this f t y is not uh, uh, of these uh, simple form then uh, uh, forming or uh, finding out the exact solution or say finding out the solution given in terms of elementary function is uh, quite difficult. And uh, <coughs> then uh, it is quite difficult to check whether this uh, particular equation is soluble or not. And uh, uh, right now we have several uh, other method or we can say numerical uh, methods or uh, say uh, using computers and all that is already available. But uh, for that also we need to know whether this system has a solution or not. So, if uh, our f t y is not uh, reducible d y by d t equal to f t y is not reducible in these uh, set forms then uh, it is quite difficult to um, proceed and uh, we cannot apply uh, this numerical uh, um, numerical solution method or say approximation solution method to e um, this equation number 1 uh, until unless we do not know whether this system has a solution or not. Because it may happen uh, because they generally use the um, say approximation technique and we really do not have any method to check whether this uh, that uh, obtained solution is a solution of this equation or not. So, uh, the this existing, um, uh, existing and uniqueness theorem is very very important uh, uh, for these kind of system. So, in, in this lecture we will uh, focus on how to 
um, say give uh, say condition on this function f t y says that this system 1 has a solution and uh, if there is any other condition on f says that uh, the solution the existence um, the solution is unique or not. So, that uh, all these um, questions we try to answer in this lecture here. So, first uh, let us start with the uh, simplest form that is uh, linear form. So, here we assume that your f uh, t y is given as some a t y plus b t and try to find out the uh, the effect of a t and b t uh, in, in the solution. So, let us uh, consider the following differential equation y dash plus y upon t equal to 2 and t is greater than 0 and the initial condition is, is given as y 1 equal to 2 and we try to find out the solution of this. And uh, if you look at this can be solved in a very easy manner you can simply rewrite this as uh, t of y dash plus y equal to 2 of t and this can be written as d by dt of a t y equal to 2 of t and you can simply integrate and you can write it here t y equal to t square uh, plus some constant c 1 and we can write y as uh, say t plus some c 1 upon t. So, this is a general solution and this the constant uh, the constant c 1 can be um, um, obtained using the initial condition. So, y 1 equal to 2 is the initial condition given. So, with the help of uh, y 1 equal to 2 you can find out you can fix this uh, constant c 1. So, we can uh, easily check that the solution of equation number 2 is given by y t equal to t plus 1 by t. In fact, the general solution which we have just obtained is given by t plus c by t and this c can be obtained by the initial condition y 1 equal to 2 that is I, I can write it here 2 equal to 1 plus c 1 and you can find out c 1 as 1. So, it means that the condition as the solution is given as y t equal to t plus 1 by 2 and we can observe that the solution of the initial value problem 2 to 3 is tending to infinity as t tending to 0 because of this term because of this term as t tending to 0 this solution y t equal to t plus 1 by t is tending to infinity. So, this may not surprise us because the coefficient if you look at the equation here the coefficient of y is 1 by t and uh, it also uh, uh, have the same feature that as t tending to 0 this 1 by t is also tending to infinity. So, it means that the coefficient function of y that is 1 by t has uh, a point of discontinuity at point t equal to 0. So, it means that uh, if the uh, differential equation has a say point of discontinuity at some point uh, it may uh, happen that the solution will also have the point of discontinuity at the same point. Now, look at uh, another uh, situation when uh, initial condition is now replaced by y 1 equal to 1 earlier it is uh, y 1 equal to 2 now it is uh, replaced by y 1 equal to 1 then if you look at uh, uh, the general solution is given by t plus c upon t and if you use y 1 equal to 1 that is 1 equal to 1 plus c and you can say that this implies that c equal to 0. And in this case our uh, uh, since c equal to 0 so our, uh, gen, uh, our solution is given by y t equal to t. Now, uh, uh, now here we can observe this thing that though uh, your uh, uh, differential equation has point of discontinuity at, at point t equal to 0, but the solution y t equal to t is uh, behaving very nicely at point t equal to 0. So, if we combine these two things, then we can say that in the case of linear differential equations that is d y by d t plus a t y t equal to b t uh, with the initial condition y t not equal to y naught are not necessarily discontinuous means I am talking about the solution that is the solution of this initial value problem uh, are not necessarily discontinuous at the point where the coefficients are discontinuous. But if a solution is not continuous at some point it is only those point where coefficient are not continuous. So, if you look at this this is a um, uh, linear differential equation uh, here. And here we can say that in if we take the initial condition y 1 equal to 2 then we have a solution like y t equal to t plus 1 by t and here the point of discontinuity is at t equal to 0 which is the same point at which the coefficient of y has a discontinuity. But if you look at uh, the initial condition y 1 equal to 1 and corresponding to that if you look at the solution y t equal to t then it has no discontinuity. So, it means that 
if uh, it may happen the, uh, that the coefficient are discontinued at some point, but the solution may not be uh, say uh, uh, may, may not be uh, discontinued at all. But if it has discontinuity, it must be at those point only where the coefficients of differential equations uh, fail to be continuous. So, that is uh, the example given here. So, now uh, um, uh, after um, considering this linear differential equation, now let us consider a nonlinear initial value problem. So, now if we consider a nonlinear initial value problem 1, then situation may be quite different. It means what? that in general there is no relation between the region where the function f t y is continuous and the region where the solution exists. So, here it may happen that f t y is continuous in, in the entire um, uh, region r, but the solution may not exist for the entire r. So, for let us consider one simple example. So, consider the following nonlinear differential equation y dash equal to y square with the initial condition y 0 equal to y naught where y naught is some positive value. Then the general solution of 5 is given by y t equal to minus 1 upon t plus c and this can be easily obtained because if you look at this is nothing but uh, say uh, separation and variable form and you can write it y dash upon y square equal to uh, say 1. So, we can write it uh, dy upon y square equal to dt and we can simply integrate and you can write it minus y. 1 upon y equal to some t plus c and we can write down that y t is equal to minus 1 upon t plus c is the general solution of this equation number 5. And the solution of the initial value problem that is y 0 equal to y naught we can fix this value c and we can write down the solution of this initial value problem as y t equal to y naught upon 1 minus y naught t. And here your f t y is what? Here f t y is y square and if you look at this y square is continuous for all values of uh, t. So, it means that here y square is continuous for all t in r, but the solution is going to be unbounded at t equal to 1 by 1, uh, 1 by y naught because if you look at this y t is unbounded provided that this 1 minus y naught t is 0. So, 1 minus y naught t is 0 is as t equal to 1 upon y naught and since y naught is positive. So, it means that for given uh, some positive value of t that is 1 by y naught the y t is going to be unbounded. So, here your uh, f t y is say continuous for all t, but your solution may not exist for um, uh, the all t. And in a previous case when f t y is uh, your this a t y plus b t and then the coefficient of uh, uh, y uh, the coefficient a t and b t will give you some information about the solution. Now, uh, now look at uh, some uh, uh, following differential equation. So, 2 y dash square plus t square equal to 0 and if you try to solve this problem then this can be solved only when, when y dash equal to 0 and t equal to 0. So, it means that here if we solve this we will not have any real valued solution to satisfy this because this simply is that this can be solved only for y 0 uh, y t equal to 0 and that is al also true only for a particular point that is t equal to 0. So, here we cannot define a solution of this differential equation. So, here we have a differential equation which may not have any real value solution. Now, uh, uh, consider the next uh, initial value problem and we can check that depending on the initial value we may have no solution, one solution or more than one solution. For example, if you consider this uh, differential equation t y dash minus 3 y plus 3 equal to 0 and if you look at the all the part a, b and c equation is same. <coughs> the only thing is that initial condition not change here in first case it is y 0 equal to 1, in second case it is y 1 equal to 1 and in third case it is y 0 equal to 1 and we try to check that if uh, the only thing we are changing is the initial condition and we can check uh, that by changing this initial condition what is the effect on the solution here. So, uh, to find out the solution here uh, I will use this uh, uh, thing. So, here we have t y dash minus 3 y uh, plus 3 equal to 0 and we want to find out the solution here. So, here first we find out the uh, solution of the homogeneous problem that is t y dash minus 3 y equal to 0. So, here y dash upon y equal to 3 by t and you can write ln y 
equal to uh, 3 ln t and we can find out that y equal to t cube is a solution of this plus some constant you can write it and we can uh, put on since uh, you can put some constant also and then we since we want only one particular solution I can write it y equal to t cube. Now to find out the solution of this non uh, homogeneous problem uh, we can use a variation of parameter uh, uh, method and we can write it uh, why non homogeneous solution is some c into t cube here uh, c is a parameter here. Now to find out uh, uh, this parameter which uh, uh, for which this y n h is a solution of this non homogeneous problem we can simply say y dash equal to c dash t cube plus uh, uh, 3 t square c and we can put it here. So, t y dash is basically uh, c dash t to the power 4 uh, plus 3 t cube c and we can plug in the value of t y dash and y and we can write it here c dash t to the power 4 plus 3 t cube c minus 3 uh, c t cube plus 3 equal to 0 and you can see that these are cancelled out and you can write down c dash equal to minus 3 upon t to the power 4 and we can integrate and you can get it uh, c as uh, minus 3 t to the power minus 4 uh, integration of this and you can write it this is nothing but um, minus 3 t to the power minus 3 upon minus 3 plus some integration constant let us say c1 and you can write it this is as uh, t to the power minus 3 and you can write it c1 here. So, we can find out the general solution like this the general solution is y of nh is given as um, this um, you can write it here t cube you multiply and you can write it uh, thus uh, c uh, is 1 upon t cube plus c1 into this t cube and you can write it here as uh, 1 plus c1 t cube. So, your solution is given by uh, 1 plus c t cube. So, here we can write down uh, general solution as y t equal to 1 plus c t cube. So, this is our general solution and now uh, initial conditions are given. So, we can fix our c here. So, if you look at the first one that is y 0 equal to 0 and if you want to find out the solution in this case then it is 0 equal to 1 plus c and into 0. So, we can say that it is given as 0 equal to 1 which cannot be true. So, it means that <coughs> if we consider this uh, differential equation along with this initial condition then uh, we will have no solution. So, this initial value problem the uh, initial value problem given in A has no real solution. But if you look at the uh, initial value problem given B that is uh, we are considering this condition uh, this is y 0 equal to 0 and let us consider this y 1 equal to 1 then in this case it is 1 equal to 1 plus c and you can check that c is equal to 0. So, here we can say that solution is what a solution is given as y t equal to 1 only. So, here we have uh, one and only one real solution that is y t is adding equal to 1. So, in uh, the case b when initial condition is replaced by y 1 equal to 1 then we have only one solution that is y 1 y t equal to adding equal to 1. Now, uh, let us change further and we write uh, we use y 0 equal to 1 here and here the solution is what y t equal to 1 plus c t cube uh, using the condition that is 1 plus 1 and this c into 0. So, we can say that this is 1 equal to 1 and c can uh, here it has no effect of this c. So, it means that whatever c you can take and still it satisfy this initial value problem. So, it means that it means that uh, for any value c belongs to r this y t equal to 1 plus c t cube is a solution of this. And uh, similarly, you can handle this uh, uh, situation y dash equal to y to power 1 by 2 y 0 equal to 0 and we can simply solve this problem. This is a simply separab uh, separation and variable problem and you can see that this has at least two solution that is 0 and uh, t square upon 4 and uh, not only two solution you can check that it has uh, infinitely solution. So, that I am leaving it to you. So, it means that if we combine all this thing we can say that we have seen that there are initial value problems which have one solution more than one solution or no solution at all. So, this leads to us the following questions question number 1 how do we know that the initial value problem has one or more than one solution. We are not uh, generally interested on those problem in which we have no solution at all 
and <coughs> basically you can say that uh, these uh, uh, initial value problems are say some mathematical model of some real um, uh, say model and uh, in real situation we are expecting that if we are making any uh, mathematical model we are expecting that we are handling, having at least one solution. So it means that uh, the problems which has no solution we generally are not much interested. Now uh, the first question is that how do we know that the initial value problem has one or more than one solution and the second question is that if we have a solution of one, so somehow we know that it has one solution then we want we are interested in whether it is unique or not. There may be 2, 3 or infinitely many solution of 1 that we have already seen that in this last case this t y dash minus 3 y plus 3 equal to 0 y 0 equal to 1 it has infinitely many solution. So, it means that once we know that it has a solution we are interested in knowing that whether it has a unique solution or not. Now, uh, next question which is uh, kind of uh, important one, uh, why bother asking the first two question that whether it has a solution or a unique solution. After all what is the use of determining whether one has a unique solution if you are not able to find it explicit manner. So, it means that if we do not know how to find out the solution then why we are worried about the first two question whether it has a unique solution or more than one solution. But the question number 3 uh, with the development of this technology this question number 3 is uh, now not much uh, useful because uh, with the help of um, say uh, uh, softwares many software are already available once we know that solution exists and it has a unique solution then we can always uh, use uh, some um, uh, numerical technique to find out the solution which is uh, uh, say which is approximately uh, 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 exact solution up to say decimals to, uh, 10 to power minus 15 or 16 up to that level. So, uh, we are not much worried about question number 3 here right now we are very much interested in uh, trying to consider the first two question that is whether it has a solution or um, if it has a solution it has more than one solution or uh, unique solution. <coughs> so, here we want to discuss the condition by which we can answer these questions. So, once we know that the differential equation 1 has a unique solution y t then we have our license to find out analytical or numerical solution. So, first uh, thing is to find out the analytical solution if we are not able to find out the analytical solution we try to find out the numerical solutions and uh, right now we have uh, very much added by uh, say softwares which are freely available here. Now, uh, so to find out the first thing that uh, whether we have a unique solution or not we uh, try to look at this problem in the following uh, way. So, we uh, have the following algorithm for proving the existence of a solution y t of 1. What we try to do we construct a sequence of function y and t which come closer and closer to solving n 1. And so, we have to construct this sequence y and t we will see that how we can find out this sequence of function which uh, is uh, approximating the exact solution. Now, showing that uh, the sequence y and t has a limit y t. So, once we have a sequence next step is to show that it has a limit and it has a limit let us call it as y t on a some suitable interval say t naught to t naught plus alpha and last step is to prove that the limit which we have already obtained is a solution of 1 on this particular interval that is t naught to t naught plus alpha. So, first thing is constructing a sequence second thing is to prove that this uh, sequence is converging and once it is converging define that limit as y t and try to prove that y t is a limit of the uh, y t is a solution of the given problem. So, that is how we try to proceed. So, uh, <coughs> so uh, let us uh, proceed with this. So, suppose f is continuous in a domain d and that t naught y naught is an arbitrary point of d. So, we have a domain where this f is continuous in its uh, uh, argument that is t and y and uh, t naught y naught uh, is an arbitrary point of in that domain. The first step towards the existing result is to show that the initial value problem dy by dt equal to f t y 
with the initial condition y t not equal to y not is equivalent to this integral equation that is y t equal to y not plus t to t not f of s y of s d s. In fact, it is uh, t not to t and we try to show that this uh, initial value problem is equivalent to this um, uh, integral equation. And uh, why this is important because uh, using this equation number 6, we try to construct the uh, sequence of function which will converge the solution of this initial value problem. So, the precise equivalence is given as follows lemma 1. A function y t is a solution of initial value problem d y by d t equal to f t y, y t not equal to y not on an interval i if and only if y t is a solution of the integral equation 6 here. So, it means that here we say that y t is a solution of this initial problem if uh, y t is a continuous solution of this integral equation number 6 here. So, here I am assuming that the solution of this initial value problem that is d y by d t equal to f t y y t not equal to y not is equivalent as a continuous solution of this integral equation number 6 here. So, let us uh, uh, prove the equivalence and uh, if y is a solution of d y by d t equal to f t y on i satisfying y t not equal to y not then we can uh, simply integrate here from t not to t and we can write y t minus y t not equal to t not to t f of s y of s d s where t belongs to i. Now, here we can put uh, um, we can put t equal to t not and we can say that uh, y t is coming out to be y t not is coming out to be y not and we can see that if y is a solution of this initial value um, problem then y uh, is a solution of this integral equation that is y t equal to uh, y uh, y not t not to t f of s y of s t of s. Now, uh, so this is one way proof now the proof the other way round that if y t is a continuous solution of integral equation 6 then uh, since y t is continuous and f is also continuous in its argument then we can say that f is a continuous uh, function of t and we can say that uh, the right hand side that is t naught to t f of s y of s d s is basically a differentiable function. So, it means once it is a differentiable function then we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and we can write that y dash equal uh, sorry uh, this y t equal to y naught plus this if we simply differentiate this what we will get y dash t equal to and here if we differentiate we will get f of t y of t. So, it means that if uh, um, a y which is a continuous function is a solution of this equation number 6 then y dash t equal to f t y t is true. Now, regarding the initial condition we can put t equal to t naught and we can have the initial condition that y t naught equal to y naught. So, and putting t equal to t naught in 6 we can say that y t naught equal to y naught. So, it means that the <coughs> solution of this initial value problem is equivalent to a continuous solution of this integral equation number 6. So, once this equivalence is uh, proved uh, we will try to proceed further and with the help of this lemma we will establish the existence of a solution of 1 by proving the existence of a solution of integral equation that is equation number 6 here. So, now our problem is to uh, is reduced to find a solution of the associated integral equation that is now we want to find out a function such that it satisfy the uh, integral equation 6 that is y t equal to say y naught plus t naught to t f of s y of s d s here y naught is basically y of t naught. So, <coughs> now here uh, once we have this uh, integral equation and we know that if uh, this f of s y s is uh, integrable then we can simply integrate and we can have a solution. For example, if we take f t y t as g t then we can simply integrate if g t is uh, integrable, but since we are assuming that f is continuous function. So, it means that g is also continuous function and so it can be integrable. So, it means that uh, in a particular case when f s y s is a simple function or integrable function we can integrate this, but uh, suppose it is not then uh, we cannot find out the uh, exact solution or say analytical solution of this. Then we try to uh, proceed further to find out the approximate solution. So, how to find out the approximate solution? So, let us uh, uh, 
uh, start with the initial condition y0 as our first guess. We try to see whether this y0 satisfy this uh, um, uh, integral equation or not. So, it means that if we write look at this y0 plus t0 to t f of s now replace y by y0 and try to find out this value. If this is coming out to be y0 we simply say that y0 is a solution of this. If it is not then uh, we are in trouble and we call this uh, expression as y1 and we call this y1 as first approximation. So, the first approximation we can define as y1 t equal to y0 plus t0 to t f of s y0 ds t belongs to i and we have already uh, we have already discussed that if y1 t equal to y0 then we can say that y t equal to y0 is indeed a solution and if not we try y1 t as our next case. And in this way uh, we try uh, we can uh, we can find out a sequence of approximating solution y1 t y2 t y n t as follows that y t naught equal to y naught and y j plus 1 t equal to y naught plus t naught to t f of s y j s d s where j is starting from 0 1 2 3 and all. So, <coughs> what we have achieved so far is that uh, we have shown that uh, this initial value problem is equivalent to an integral equation and with the help of integral equation we try to find out the sequence of approximating solution and it is given as equation number 10. Now, these function y and t are called successive approximation or Picard iteration. So, first step is done that is uh, sequence of approximating solution is already given. Now, we try to find out whether uh, uh, this converge or not. So, uh, once we have a uh, sequence of approximating solution next thing is to discuss is uh, convergence of the Picard iteration. So, as pointed out in previous example, the solution of nonlinear differential equation may not exist for all time t. We have discussed this case y dash equal to y square with some <coughs> condition y naught, here y naught is greater than we have, we have seen that solution may not exist for all time t. So, it means that we cannot expect that Picard iteration y and t will converge for all time t. So, here we try to find out a range in which uh, this sequence will converge. So, to, to provide us with a clue of where the Picard iteration converge, we try to find out an interval in which all the y and t's are uniformly bounded. That is modulus of y and t is less than or equal to k for some fixed constant k, that constant k will uh, be determined later. So, now we need to find out the interval in which this y and t is convergent. In other word we want to find out a rectangle in which the graph of y and t will be contained. So, uh, that uh, we are going to discuss, but before that we will consider one more very important condition which is known as Lipschitz condition. So, let us first assume that f and double f by double y are continuous function on a closed rectangle r. Now, here this is the rectangle which we are talking about. <coughs> it is set of all t y says that t is lying between t naught to t naught plus a and y is uh, in a way says that y minus y naught is less than or equal to b. So, it is a closed rectangle and it is centered at t naught comma y naught and here we are assuming that this f and double f by double y are continuous function on this rectangle closed rectangle r. Then we can say that this is uh, f and double f by double y are bounded by Thus, the function f and uh, double f by double y are bounded above by constant m and we can write this as modulus of f t y is bounded by m and double f by double y is bounded by. Now, <coughs> we uh, consider the next lemma that is if double f by double y is continuous in r then there exists a positive constant k such that modulus of f t y 2 minus f t y uh, y 1 is less than or equal to k times y 2 minus y 1 where t y 1 and t y 2 belongs to this rectangle r for all points t comma y in r. And we say that if double f by double y is continuous then f satisfy this condition and we uh, know that this condition is quite useful and we call this condition as Lipschitz condition and we say that if double f by double y is continuous then uh, f satisfy the Lipschitz condition that is what we wanted to prove in this lemma number so, proof is uh, not very difficult let, let us look at here if t comma y 1 and t comma y 2 are 2 points in r and assume that 
uh, y1 is less than y2 without loss of generality. Then by Rho's mean value theorem we can write down that uh, there exists a eta between y1 and y2 such that f t y2 minus f t y y1 is equal to dev f by dev y comma uh, t comma eta y2 minus y1. And we already know that this t comma eta is bounded in R. So, it means that dev f by dev y at this particular point is bounded by k that we have already assumed here that dev f by dev y is bounded by this k. So, using this uh, we can write uh, this result as modulus of f t y 2 minus f t y 1 is less than or equal to k times y 2 minus y 1 uh, valid whenever this t y 1 and t y 2 are in R. So, it means that if dev f by dev y is continuous in closed rectangle R then it satisfies this condition and we define this condition as Lipschitz condition. So, a function f that satisfy an equality of the form 12 for all t comma y 1 and t comma y 2 in a reason r is said to satisfy a Lipschitz condition in r and the constant k is called the Lipschitz constant. So, it means that if we have this condition that f t y 2 minus f t y 1 is less than or equal to k times y 2 minus y 1 modulus then we say that f satisfy the Lipschitz condition and we will see that if f satisfy the Lipschitz condition then uh, the initial value problem has a unique solution that is what we wanted to prove. Let us uh, discuss some more uh, point about it. We have already so, uh, shown in uh, previous lemma that if f and dev f by dev y are continuous on R then f satisfy a Lipschitz condition that we have shown. But converse may not be true. In fact, there are functions f satisfying the Lipschitz condition but in a particular reason but they do not uh, they do not have continuous partial derivative with respect to y. For example, if you consider this f t y equal to t uh, modulus of y we can check that it satisfy the uh, uh, Lipschitz condition in a reason containing 0 0. So, this is not very difficult to show we can simply say that this f t y is equal to t modulus of y. So, f t y 2 minus f t y 1 you can write it t modulus of y 2 uh, minus t of y 1 and you can check that if you take the modulus here then you can simply check that it is modulus of t and you can write it this is y 2 minus y 1 here and if uh, t belongs to some <coughs> bounded domains you can always write it like this y 2 minus y 1 if this t. So, it means that this uh, function f t y equal to t modulus of y satisfy ellipsis condition in y, but here we can say that if that reason contain the point 0 0 then this may not satisfy the uh, um, uh, differentiability criteria that is dev f by dev y may not exist in this reason. Let us consider one more example. Here this example uh, says that it may happen that a particular function may not satisfy the Lipschitz condition in one reason, but it may satisfy the Lipschitz condition in another reason it may happen. For example, consider this f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 in the rectangle R where R is defined as modulus of t less than or equal to 1 modulus of y is less than or equal to 2 then f does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition that we want to check uh, that we can check like this that f of t y 2 minus f of t y 1 we want to show that it is k times y 2 minus y 1 or you can simply say that f t y 2 minus f t y 1 divided by y 2 minus y 1 is less than or equal to k. So, it means that if this quantity is bounded by some k we say that f t y satisfy the Lipschitz condition and to show that it is uh, not satisfying the Lipschitz condition we want to show that this quantity is unbounded. So, let us take a pair t y 1 and t comma 0 in a uh, rectangle that is t from minus 1 to 1 and y 1 is greater than 0 here. So, if we take this look at this quantity f t y 1 minus f t y naught divided by y 1 minus 0 and since uh, y naught is 0 you can simply say that it is nothing but f t y 1 that is y 1 to power 1 by 3 divided by y 1 here and if we simplify you can get y 1 to power minus 2 by 3. Now, if we choose y 1 greater than 0 sufficiently small close to 0 then 
this quantity is unbounded. So, it means that this y to power minus 2 by 3 cannot be bounded by it means that it is clear that k equal to y to power minus 2 by 3 can be made larger than any pre assigned constant. Therefore, this uh, 12 that is f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 is not satisfying the Lipschitz condition here. So, thus we have seen that there exists some function f t y t and a reason r where f does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition. But if you look at if you change the uh, reason here the nonlinear function f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 may satisfy the Lipschitz condition in some other rectangle that is this that uh, r 1 where uh, it is set of all t y says that modulus of t is less than or equal to 1 y minus 2 less than 1. So, here we have removed uh, the uh, point um, that is t comma 0 here. So, that point is missing here because if you look at this is uh, creating problem in the neighborhood of 0. So, it means that in R it may not satisfy the Lipschitz condition, but in this R 1 it is satisfying the Lipschitz condition. So, that you can check in fact you can check that f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 uh, this uh, you can calculate dev f by dev y and it is coming out by 1 by 3 y to power minus 2 by 3 and this is uh, defined if um, uh, <coughs> y is not defined in the neighborhood of origin. So, in um, in this rectangle this is perfectly uh, valid and you can say that here uh, it satisfies the Lipschitz condition. So, uh, we have discussed the Lipschitz condition here. Now, uh, with this uh, let us stop here and we will continue our uh, discussion in uh, lect lecture. So, what we have done in this lecture we have uh, uh, defined the equivalence of initial value problem with the integral equation and uh, we have defined the sequence of uh, approximating solution and uh, we have also discussed the condition imposed on the nonlinear function f t y and we say that if f satisfy the Lipschitz condition then the sequence of approximating solution will converge to a limit which is the solution of the required initial value problem that is the content of uh, existing and unique theorem. So, that will continue in next lecture. So, here we will uh, stop and uh, we will continue in next lecture. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.